right, David. So thank you for joining us for the podcast this week. Thank you. You're uh, you're going to be our first guest. So what do you think about that? I like it. You like it? Yeah. I like <laughs> what do you like about it? I don't know the podcast. Being in a podcast, I, I have been before like once or twice at the podcast or something similar. And interesting. We will see what what we will make of it. Where we go with our talk. We'll see where we go. Yeah. Um, David's going to be our first guest for the podcast. And I met I David know. a few years ago in Leeuwarden. It was a very nice, it was a very nice time. So um, since he's going to be our first guest, we're going to be interviewing David just for fun, shits and giggles, and hopefully get some uh, talk about magic. Yes, let's do it. So who is David? <laughs> who is David? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that's difficult. Um, yeah, it's uh, like I'm thinking how deep should I go and so on. Um, go as deep as you want. I don't know, I'm uh, yeah, David is a guy from Russia. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, um, I'm also half uh, Afghanian, so really, yeah, half yeah, Afghanian. Good okay, yeah, born in Russia, Moscow until his until the age of 15, and then came here to the Netherlands living here studying psych- psychology doing magic mm-hmm. philosophy religion right yeah that's those are my interests <laughs> and arts yeah, mm. like that. you came at the to the Netherlands at the age of 15 right yes f- 15 yeah and then you had to learn Dutch from that age on um, yes um, actually no, no to be uh, to be like right it, it was actually when i was four about four years old mm-hmm. i was here i was in in the netherlands uh, with, with my family with my mother with my father with my brother sister and so on we we lived here like for three four years and then mm-hmm. we, we went back to moscow and when i was 15 i went again here with my family with my mother brothers and so on and then you stayed here yeah i stayed here since uh, i'm 10 Ten, 10 years here and yeah at that moment yeah I, I couldn't speak Dutch even though I was here when I was little but yeah you know mm-hmm. when you're little your language goes away so um, yeah I had to learn Dutch and that's also like uh, the moment when I started to do magic like, okay and did, uh, the, did that help you in any way to communicate yeah, with people yeah, uh, yeah. yeah you know it like uh, a part Partially, I told you already the the story is like when I came here, I was like f- fifteen, and mm-hmm. I just started doing magic, mm-hmm. at the age of fourteen, something like that, and I couldn't speak English, just a couple of words. I couldn't mm-hmm. speak Dutch at all, but I had to communicate, and I but I had this opportunity to do just magic, and I did just magic, mm-hmm. like that. And that's why I connected with, with people and learned like the language also mm-hmm. eventually. But yeah, that was like, yeah, a thing which uh, in a sense was my power to still like live here and so on. Yeah. So then you would say magic also helped you to learn the Dutch language? Or the Dutch language, the communication and just uh, because when, when you come in a new country, country you're like in a bubble you don't speak mm. the language you don't understand the culture you it's like so you're sort of like an outsider yeah yeah and it's like yeah it's just uh, like they say also the cultural shock mm. and so but uh and i had like nothing to do like actually but magic was still something what oh i can use this mm-hmm. and so that was the the port where all my energy could go out oh, right, which okay. is inside and then mm-hmm. and because it was like an outweigh uh, s- some uh, to break like those social walls and uh, language barriers and so on mm-hmm. I became good in it because it was something that helped me and uh, I enjoyed it and mm-hmm. so from there uh, my passion and my love for magic just grew a lot like yeah awesome yeah because it was like a I learned a lot, a lot of things mm. in school uh, and so on in, in Russia, but magic was the the thing which uh, helped me the most, <laughs> actually. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Don't go to school, kids. Learn yeah, magic. Learn magic, yeah. 
But um, like, in what way would you say that um, magic doesn't have language? Doesn't have language? Yeah, right. Because because you can like you just said like you can break language barriers with magic. Yeah, yeah. So how do you think magic does that and helps you to do that? I think it's uh, yeah, in a sense, everybody kind of understand it or mm. something. They see you, you're tr- you're trying to do something, mm. and you're and you're welcoming them. Mm. And uh, yeah, I think that that's something. Uh, it's like uh, a language with, without talking, but just like with watching. Mm. There, there are words. Um, um, yeah, it's like a, diff- a different way of communication, I would say. Mm. Um, yeah, it's like watching and just... Uh, in a sense, it's more s- simplified. Mm. But in a, in in a, in another sense, it's more deeper. Like mm. uh, like we have like uh, I don't know silent magicians like I don't know Penn and Teller and so yeah. on. You cannot like talk, so your tools you have lesser tools mm. in, in a way to connect. Right. But still, like in those, uh, um, like in the we can say in the silent magicians, mm. a lot of them they are like they go so deep and you're like damn man and the other guy is like talking talking blah 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 and you you don't really connect this is not saying he's not saying anything like yeah he says something with his mouth but not really with his soul exactly yeah yeah. and that's also like uh charlie chaplin Mm. also the best example you know like less is more like Mm. you do we have so much things which just uh um, overshadow each other and Mm. but if you just take them out and be more simple in a way mm. and that that can be in a way more profound I would mm. say. Yeah. I think so and yeah. but also f- magic wise it's very strong in some way yeah. because there was this interview from Teller where he said that it's um, much easier to fool someone when they tell them the story themselves mm-hmm. yes. like you can know of course you can say I, I, I take your card I put it in the middle yeah. I don't control yeah. nothing and then yes. you know yeah. it's on top or whatever but but already you shouldn't say that you know because you shouldn't say what you're doing because yeah. people can see yeah. what you're doing like don't yes. don't tell show don't tell but he says like if they're telling it to themselves what's happening everything you don't say anything right no. like you're telling themselves the story and this lie sort of because mm-hmm. they don't really know what's going on they just think they know and yes, then yes. at one point they're sort of game over also i would say yeah, I, I, I think I, I think it's yeah, it's it's stronger because also in a way if if it's only uh, like we are talking and they are just listening mm-hmm. it's different than when they need to watch or it's like uh, you're talking to a person who maybe speaks your language but yeah. he's bad at it. He's <laughs> then your your ears like uh, you, you focus, you, you focus more yeah. like, okay, what does he mean? What oh maybe mm-hmm. and and you maybe you you don't have even the 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 right meaning what he does, <laughs> but you you are going like together like okay mm. we are trying to make sense of it, and I think for magic that's a really good thing like to to both of the people they need to in, engage in a way, right? Otherwise, like with words we have so much st- stereotypes. Mm. Oh, and I listen. Okay, A B C D and yeah. It's a good point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, do you do you think some magicians in some way are afraid of silence? Because I I, I very often feel that you know like sometimes the strongest magical reaction you could get is just mm-hmm. someone staring at you in complete silence, like being completely dumbfounded. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and it's not like they're not staring at you like I'm bored. Hmm. Like like, okay, cool. Yeah. But it's more like you're like, you know, like like the their mind just tries to put together, but it's the sort of yeah. has this error, and they go like, but that's not, but he did, did no, but that's not yeah, possible, yeah, right? Yeah, and they try yeah, to find yeah. every out way, but they're, they're just they're like, Fuck. Yeah. but I feel like I very often see magicians do this where then they go to the uh-huh. wait, turn off, yes. and where you mean like when they are going uh, into the. How they say it? 
the spectator goes in that state of yeah, silence. Yeah, and, and they then say, but usually they, at this point I get applause or something. Yeah, and they and they break it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I believe that for sure. Yeah. Um, but also, I feel like sometimes people could just shut up and show them what they're doing. Like, I don't think you always need to be talking in your performance. Yes. Yes. Um, but. I very often feel that some magicians don't feel comfortable with that, so they just say whatever then, because they feel like they have to say something. It's some way to get yes. their nerves out, maybe. Yes, whatever. yeah. I think I think it's also uh, easier to talk a lot while while you're doing magic, because when mm -hmm. you talk, you you have the you take the attention, like, mm -hmm. and uh, if there is silence, and uh, they are not in that state of. But then, then they you lose the attention, and that's like. Uh, but the, I, I think the that, that depends, though, because there is no, there is a difference between yeah. silence and uh, me being all in my cards. No, no, no. Or I, silence I, and me being like completely silent, present with all of you, looking at all yes, of you and doing yes. something. But there can be also silence. But the people uh, they don't catch you. They are not with you, mm -hmm. in a sense. Of course, so it's important to be yeah. present with everyone yeah, in some yeah. way. Yeah, I, I, I think it's also about like uh, um, the rhythm and the words which you say, like, um, like that every point in your pattern needs to be like meaningful and like the intonation and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and to cut out all, all, all the stuff, yeah. I, I see it in myself and uh, a lot of magicians like oh we can do it easier <laughs> like yeah yeah just to remove everything until there's nothing left to remove and then in, in a sense yes everything that's unnecessary because there's some things you could say or do that make it stronger yes but I think there's also a lot of things we say or do just because we're nervous in some way or because we don't know what to do or because we it's a bad habit that we learn yeah that's also the the thing like uh, um i think with what i'm i'm not that good with pattern mm -hmm. I, uh, I i i try to make my own pattern and so on and then uh, you have the dilemma like mm -hmm. okay i will cut everything out or i will make the best pattern for this effect and so mm -hmm. on but then you cut a lot of it out mm -hmm. but then you think okay but where can i improvise maybe mm -hmm. But it's uh, yeah, it's different with what kind of magic you do, of course, it's mm -hmm. stage show and so on, and how to do it uh, in a sense with um, more feeling and so on. Um, and I guess it also depends what you want to say, right? Like, because mm -hmm. sometimes I guess there's something you want to express that's best said with no words, and other times you want to use words, or you want to use both, like uh, the coin act I do on stage. Oh, yes. Where I introduce it with words and yeah. leave you with a context, but then there's yeah. just silence and music. Yeah, I saw it. It's beautiful. Huh? Thank you. Yeah, um, I think it it is if you if, if you have the picture vividly in your mm -hmm. mind who you are in that moment and in which world you are, then it will go naturally. Because if mm -hmm. you make also like uh, in a way this okay, and here goes the silence, and the silence is not really like in you, yeah. you can go also in that way you can uh, like program yourself okay and now i'm be silent and it's not oh the, no but that the, sense, it yeah. has to be in the moment but but yeah. i think some programs of silence could be good because if you're on yeah, stage so for course. example it's it's a general good idea to pause for three to five seconds after you did an effect of course yes yes but i'm i mean in a, in a way like yeah but if you talk talk and i'm going to be silent yeah. and then talk talk and then it's better maybe to have that come naturally Yes, to I get a feeling for it, but I think I I, I think the best thing is to uh, like think about uh, the, the place, the context of where you are with mm. this magic effect, in which world, where where are you going with this effect, mm. and like um, like imagine it good and how you feel, how you want to feel, mm. and uh, make it uh, maybe an extreme, and uh, what they do actually in the theater, they are. Um, like they have like a monologue or something mm. and they try to go like slowly build up uh, the emotion okay now i will do this monologue mm. 
angry like talking to i don't know a colleague or somebody and they are like going to the end mm-hmm. and then they are switching the monologue and switching the Im- imagination and now i will do the same monologue like i'm crying and so on then and then slowly and waiting like that mm-hmm. with feelings and so on because mm-hmm. uh, yeah it's difficult to imagine it but you imagine it and just mm-hmm. try to say it and then it, it, it goes by itself it's like yeah and then and then you have also those natural uh, silences of some i don't mm. know uh, expressions something so that comes from the emotion or the moment and yeah from the mind yes yeah 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 all right um what do you believe good magic is mm. good magic or what's good magic to you that's uh, yeah good good magic for me it's uh because it's subjective, of course. Yes, yes, yes. F- for me, it's um, uh, it 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 must be fun for me. Mm-hmm. Like it must be fun. There must be something like. Uh, I want to enjoy it, mm-hmm. so that uh, the people around also like the audience get it and so mm-hmm. on. Uh, connecting, that's uh, number one for me. Mm-hmm. And the second thing. It, like if it has also some deeper meanings and so on mm. that's also nice yeah but the first one is uh it's a prayer it's like it's to be fun for you so it must fun it must mm. be engaging it must be it's not boring like i, I yeah like yeah. you're not bored because you think oh, i want to show them this but it's boring for you then or or it's boring for one guy but not for the other because mm. like i like that uh bukowski that writer I don't know. Uh, I think I think he's Bukowski or I, f- I forgot his name. Mm. I'm bad at names. <laughs> you know that. Um, but he was saying like I'm reading all those classical uh, literature and um, different kind of literature and it's all boring. And mm. There was even like a quote of him. It must writing must be like beam 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 beam. So you need to like you you need to want to know what oh what's next what's next yeah you want to read the next sentence yeah 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 yeah. i think uh for me like magic uh that's that's how uh, magic supposed to be Mm. Uh, or that's the good magic but further you have also other uh, kind of magic but for me that's uh, that's uh, a thing which uh, magic needs like keeps you engaged keep you engaged nice juicy in Mm. in in a way like wow it's like yeah. Okay. Do who do you think does a good job at this? Um, like as a magician that you know from today. Who? A lot of magicians. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of Spanish magicians. They're really good in, in, yeah. in that. I think. Do I you think like I the Spanish style? Huh? Do you like the Spanish style? Yeah. Yeah. What do you like about it? I don't know. Like. Um, so uh, how they are doing it like in a way like in in the west uh, at least what i see some of the magic is like more uh, in a sense scientific and then go into mm-hmm. mentalism and into okay i and that's also nice that's also beautiful mm-hmm. that's just a different style uh well uh, the spanish i see they do it too but they are like it's like in a sense more easy it's mm. more 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 engaging like some of that stuff like that mentalism stuff i can show to some people and they say ah mm. uh, what okay but i think I'm mentalism really is also weird for that because i don't mm. think it translates that well usually on camera and it's much nicer in person um i think i i, I think it's different it's mm. so it's also yeah how you film it and, and so on like there are also like some mentalist stuff with, which i think oh it's especially good for mm. But uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's different factors. I think, mm-hmm. but uh, engaging like I I can show some stuff to to like l- lay audience and some people they will like to know oh how does mm-hmm. he do it and so on and they will stay engaged. But some for some people they don't really care and mm-hmm. and for them it's like then you're watching with, with your friends but that one guy who is like not really into oh I don't care how he, he does it then mm. I, um, I'm like I want to connect 
mm. with, with with your audience and whatever. Mm. You, know, you want to be like a one whole uh, mm. group, like that's that's like the climax. That, that, that's mm. the highest thing which we want to do in the, any show. I think. Gotcha. Yeah. Ooh, it's gonna turn off again, or maybe it stays on in that scene. My technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Yeah. Let's bring it <laughs> Let's see. Um, I turned this play off after one hour. <laughs> it's less than one hour. Huh. Never. All right. So never. This is on. On. And we're back. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, what other passions do you have outside of magic? Um, yeah, I, s- I studied psychology, so yeah, psychology is one mm-hmm. of the passions. And what makes you interested in that? Oh, I, it, it was from young age, like mm-hmm. uh, psychology, I also think. Like, I think also magic, like mm-hmm. a, a lot of magicians, they also they like psychology, how people think and so on. Um, you think it's useful in magic? A- any anything can be useful mm. for magic, I, can, I, I think, but uh, it's not. I agree, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I think like um, a lot of magicians also have this idea. At least I had it was well when I was younger. Like, oh, I'm gonna study psychology. Yes. Because psychology is a big part of magic, so it's gonna help me. Yeah. With it. And then you study it, and you sort of realize like, ah, huh, this is not really helping me in magic at all. Like, not in the way you expect it to. Like, exactly, of course, yeah. like, it makes you a deeper person. It makes you understand yourself and other people better. And the way, like, the people understand you and you and them, like, it makes you deeper, right? So that translates in your magic. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I think it's... I think the psychology in magic, it's not necessarily the psychology which you study. Like, mm-hmm. Uh I mean, like that that kind of psychology, the practical psychology is everywhere. Right. And you, you don't. Uh, I know people that are so good in it, but they never study it. It's just like human knowledge and mm-hmm. uh, your, like I was just the last time I was. Do talk- those, are those people aware that they're good at it? Or. or yeah, they they are aware. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, like. I'm studying psychology, but I would say like I don't know, like seventy percent of. Uh, yeah, it's maybe uh, my estimate subjective but 70 percent of the people who studied they don't have the psychology skill set mm-hmm. they cannot talk mm-hmm. they like to study they are good in studying well, i they're, think you told me this one yeah. yeah and they're just sort of you know, they have to diagnose you and they don't do it from their feeling and yeah they're gotten and all yeah. but they go yeah. like okay they write it down and then they go mm-hmm. look in like a really thick book okay what's it yes, ah, exactly. this one looks like it's yeah, yeah you have yeah, this yeah. They are maybe good in uh, research, they are good in studying, they are good in making exams. Mm. But I'm watching out uh, those people, 70%, just at, as watching, I see this person is not the best psychologist. But do you think they understand it then, or is it just... I don't know. Some of them, they don't understand it. Mm. And uh, yeah, who am I to say them? Like, <laughs> hey, guy, uh, if you want to become a psych- psychologist, it will be like really difficult for you. Because, mm. yeah. But some of them, they want to, maybe it's a thing which they want to learn and so on. And it's oh, now yeah. also really like the brain and psychology mm-hmm. is a bit in a, how do you say it, in trend. Mm-hmm. But it's also in a, like a, in a low level of trend, like just people everywhere. It's casual. Psychology. Mm-hmm. But, but also in a high level of like a lot of countries, they are just investing huge amount of money in uh, um in psychology studies and so on mm. so yeah um yes but the the psychology for magic it's you don't study it actually mm. you practice it mm. so yeah there are like a lot a lot of uh, s- psychologists who are like studying doing great experiments and studies but they cannot like uh, do the practical <laughs> kn- kn- mm. clinical thing but I think in magic the same way. There are mm. two, like some, the theory they write excellent books, but when they like perform, I, I feel like oh, they they are too much into the theory. Could you give an example of this? 
um no i i don't want to mm. name names like uh maybe for some audience they are they are because a lot of people say Ascanio for example okay huh. um because Ascanio wrote probably one of the best books on magical theory there is yes yeah. and you can see it in Spain like if in Spain yeah. people talk like the book is always on the table figurative yes. speaking right yeah. but always Ascanio comes up Yeah. And uh, I always thought like wow like this guy must be amazing and then so I feel I was like oh fuck he's boring. Yeah. And I always wondered why and then I talked with Oliver about it and apparently at one point he got sick. And uh he had also take some medication or something. And then or had some like some issue with his muscles anyway some sickness. And after that he became very slow and it wasn't interesting and nice anymore. I don't know about it. Yeah, like So that's uh, that's interesting. Well. That's that's yeah, that's interesting, but I believe also like maybe maybe he wasn't mm. just as good in, in in performing than in uh, Maybe, but he, yeah. he really understood it well and mm-hmm. I think that's always sort like, of a, a you know, difficult the, thing. The best artists, they cannot explain art. Yeah, but that's always it's 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 very difficult, you know, because in some way like Scanio's Theory helped a lot of people. Yeah, so it's a much better performance. It's like it's like a art critic, mm. film critic. The uh, a bad artist mm. can explain art better than a good artist. Because mm, the maybe. good artist, he even his language, he cannot even speak that well because he uh, like he he gives everything away just for the art. Mm. So when all the other sides we see like a lot of artists there not so good maybe in uh, other sides because those are all like they give it away that's the price which they pay for their art mm-hmm. and they go all into like uh, the art and uh, in into doing that art so I I believe in that way mm-hmm. but theory and 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 writing uh, books is also in, in a sense uh, it's it's not art it's more like mm-hmm. I, I would say it's more uh, kind of closer to science I, I, i would say i think there are exceptions also though yeah. because like eugene burger for example yeah. wrote great theory but he's also i think a really good artist yeah 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 of course it, there are some balances and so on but uh, um yeah but mostly i i i believe in that thing like, yeah, but but fred caps is another good example like he didn't write much but no. he didn't even invent much but yeah. everything he did was like perfect. yeah because he was he, he was fully in uh, not He he was he was actually also like into performing more. I, mm. I would say. Yeah, he was a performer. He, he was, was more uh, like. But I mean, in the Dutch magazines, there's quite some stuff from Caps. Yes. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. But but still, like if you see the things he used in his act, it's mostly. From somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. I think. But he did it on such a level that it becomes art. Then it's like fuck, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Performance art, performing, like mm. yeah, for me. Yeah, it is art. Yeah, and then and then you like what is art and so on. Yeah, what do you think is art? Is there a criteria for that for you? Um, I don't know what what you find beautiful. That's art. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So, but but then when would you call someone an artist, right? Because one person can find something very beautiful and the other person not. And that person is maybe an artist for himself, but not for mm. the other person. Mm. And so, and um, it, it 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 may be that he's doing something, but I you need that I think an an audience or something. Mm. And maybe your audience is is not alive at this moment, <laughs> or uh, it's uh, they don't it's get with, you at this with moment. With Van Gogh, man, that's so yeah. sad. That's so yeah. sad. But it's with with a lot of artists. I mean. Yeah, but still, mm-hmm. it's Van Gogh. Like in his time, not being recognized at all, and then now, like in Dutch history, we learn about Van Gogh. Yes. yes. As one of the greatest artists of all time, and he got like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. In his time, he in his time he went crazy because he was misunderstood, and mm-hmm. in our time, he's the one of the biggest painters that ever lived. Yes. What the fuck? Yeah. Okay, um, so what what other passions do you have? You have psychology now and psychology. Yeah, what else? Uh, magic. Mm. 
that's all 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 I know. I I I'm I'm into like like into Jungian psychology, into mm. religion. What do you like about Jungian psychology specifically? Uh, for me, it's just uh, the way of psychology is more uh, in in a sense an artistic way, more uh, mm. uh, archetypal the the psychoanalytic mm. stuff and so on. More deep in some way, maybe. It's in a sense more juicy. Juicy. Yeah. The, okay. Like, and it's uh, more. It's more beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like I, I would say, like the other psychology, it's more raw. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he, he tries to make it. It's like a bit more mm-hmm. art r- related and so on, history and so on. So. I think Jung is like very misunderstood though, very often. Yeah, possible, yeah. yeah. Or maybe more difficult to explain because like in psychology I haven't learned that much about Jung. No, 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 no. A lot of people, they, they find, find even uh, Freud and Jung like uh, not even like pseudo-scientists. <laughs> like in the scientific community. Yeah, but... but it's difficult right because like if i drop an apple you can actually measure that but yeah and i mean of course like they can measure with those scans like the brain like the activity of the brain but you still cannot really measure a lot of things it's like yeah the i I think also the things which uh like jung goes about it's a bit close to philosophy Mm -hmm. art and so on and really abstract things and even if they like if it's real and so on it's mm. uh, oh, it's almost impossible to prove mm. and I think uh, those people who even want to prove they are not really into that stuff you know they they mm. want to just like like there there was this other uh, psychologist uh, like well some of them they say he's the one who, who made psychology uh, a science empirical science like uh, Wundt mm. uh, German and he, and he was all into like measuring stuff mm. and he trained his uh, like uh, his researchers like uh, students and researchers uh, to be a, a good uh, how do you say it? a good uh, yeah a good uh, to to do experiments on the mind you know and mm. write what they do what they think and so on and uh, like so to be good at documenting those things documenting so it will be ob- objective mm. and so on but and and he was talking to all the other like uh, psychologists at that time mm. like oh it's nice but it's uh, nice l- l- <laughs> literature mm. but that's not uh, psychology that's that's not science mm. But uh, in the end, like, uh, yeah, in the end, uh, like, those are steps. I think we need both things. Mm. They, they're, sometimes they're meeting each other, sometimes not, but it's, like, more more an abstract sense or a more precise way, like, like we see it everywhere, like, uh, chaos, order, and so on. Mm. And, uh, yeah. Makes sense, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think you you also forgot to mention one thing because for the magazine you wrote about um, beatboxing. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm also into beatboxing. Yeah, sure. Also beatboxing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I was not prepared for that, but okay. So, okay, I do some beats for you. <laughs> Do you think this also has a connection with magic? 
I mean, in the magazine you wrote about it, but for those that haven't read it. Um, yes, yeah, I read the music, and uh, for sure. Um, I, I, like, since I started, like, doing beatboxing, and it's, it's, uh, it's a bit, uh, like, I, I find it a bit close to magic, because mm. it's gonna, doing a weird sound, which mm -hmm. you want, like, it's also like a small other people can't do this or not yeah it's a small this. trick yeah, yeah. like but it's uh, in a way like how do you do that also mm -hmm. you know it's like how, do f how do you make yeah. that sound yeah yeah I, re I, I remember we were mm -hmm. like uh, we were drunk walking from the city yeah. home mm -hmm. and at one point some girls like hi and you were like <laughs> yeah like this and you were like just like very surprised looking back like how did you do that <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah yeah that's yeah, the right? thing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a bit similar yeah. in that way it's a, yeah, <laughs> that's the way it's similar like um i don't know a, a pianist or a guitarist or mm. more the cl classical music people they like how do you do that yeah they know it's a lot of study and so on but here it's like the same thing with magic mm. uh, is there a trick is there a something behind it and you have to always switch when you can do like mm. uh, show it like a couple or something mm. yeah yeah and uh, i find my my rhythm is better in magic when i mm. do it and i use some of the sounds in magic also like, oh yeah right uh, like, yeah, like for yeah. going back in time and stuff right? back in time uh, and then or like uh i don't know water droplet is always nice like you know color change or something mm. like some mm. sounds just to yeah to you I use it in my magic to I, I believe like if we do the magic right mm -hmm. then we are fully in the moment and then mm -hmm. uh, if if we train and enough we do part that of you to be in the moment also to do that right? yes mm -hmm. yes and if we do it then subconsciously some stuff will come like in a way you say something uh, a natural mm -hmm. thing and um, I don't know a sound you see a lot of magicians like they do a certain sound, I don't know, some, mm -hmm. a snap or a wow or a... Yeah, yeah. but the, the, the snap is sometimes used. The snap much. is sometimes used, but some, you can see some of the magicians, how they snap. Mm -hmm. Some of them, you can see, oh, does he snap like... Sometimes if you snap so much time, at the end, it becomes also with yours. You know, the way you snap or mm -hmm. something, or the way you come to the cart and you... Yeah, no, it's, that's but it's awesome. always funny because there's some magic caster performances where some mm -hmm. people go, I'm going to snap my fingers. And the moment I snap my finger, it's going to be the only time I'm going to do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, a joke it's, for the magicians. Like, okay, gotcha. It's overused for sure. Yeah. There are, uh, and I think it's interesting from Gabi because he talks about the fictional magic. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of, um, we should see the magical gesture, like the snap or the raise or whatever yeah. you want. That can even be a sound. Yes. Sort of as like, it's the rules of the fiction. So for that yeah. session, you have a fiction. And just like in Harry Potter, like they have to train the spells. So yes. does Gabi say that you would have to, if you do a snap and for the snap a card changes, then that's the rule. That if you do this, it's going to change. So that if, Beautiful. for example, you would do it later again in the session, we just do this. And the audience would sort of already feel like, card has changed yes yeah. it works yeah you know and i like it yeah yeah that's beautiful i think yeah. that's an interesting idea yeah yeah absolutely um yeah absolutely like also the the texture you you can play also with that like mm. on how loud and so on and yeah the snap or a shout a clap or drum roll. Or sometimes even silence just just silence oh but also how you introduce the silence like, yeah yeah Sometimes you can just like, say nothing. Yeah, there are a lot of ways, like different kind of mm. silences also. Yeah. It's like a slow silence or just a... a you know, mm. uh, it's different. You can feel it. It's mm. uh, all different, like the rhythm and so on. Yeah, mm. but yeah I, I like it. I like uh, sounds in magic. And the silence also, you know, it's like uh, the more the things are used mm -hmm. in magic, the more things are controlled. Mm -hmm. uh, I like it. I, f I find it beautiful. Like, like yeah. Okay. Yeah, in a 
there was like this guy in, in Japan, like one of the, I forgot, yeah, he's Japanese, so here I can forget the name. Uh, <laughs> but he was this ramen master. Mm. He, 40 years he did his ramen. And there were like giant, uh, uh, how do you say, a lot of people want to come to his shop mm. to eat his ramen. But you cannot call in, in, in his shop. You cannot like uh, talk. <laughs> he wants to control the mm. experience as good as possible. So to control all the senses in some way. All the senses mm. and then what he does with his ramen and everything. So he can go deeper with you in that sense. Mm. And I like that. It's like actually what he did, he was giving an experience. It's like a performance art, you mm. know. You're waiting in the row for your ramen and then you're coming and you know this is like mm. the guy he did like he thought about it. It's right. Yeah. And I love this. I love this. I love that. It's a uh, nice idea though. Yeah. But also like like that's why in Magic, for example, I like um first I always thought I like it more to do close to magic, like walk yes. around. But then I was doing more and more staged MC Magic show. Yeah. And I realized like I think I'm a much better partner magician than close up. Mm-hmm. and this is just or better I like it more because I yeah. can I have the time to tell you something mm-hmm. and to go with you through a story and through like the way my mind works yes and I have control over the situation mm-hmm. to as much as I can possibly have control over it whereas if I'm hired at like a cocktail party I just have to go from table to table to table to table to table and I can still give them something beautiful, but you don't have as much control. And it's a different mm-hmm. type of magic because now I just want to be there to entertain you and to have, yeah. give you a crazy experience. Huh. And in that moment, that might be much more meaningful than if I am um, if I would try to tell you something deep. Where on stage, yeah. usually something deep is much... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, if people are partying and a guy uh, or somebody comes to you and it goes so let me deep. tell you about the meaning of life you got yeah, like dude uh, go away i yeah, just don't yeah. want to drink man and it goes so deep and the person starts to cry and like, oh, <laughs> why why the hell i hired that magician <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you why did you hire yeah, him uh, yeah. so that's the thing yeah yeah different uh, environments mm-hmm. different magic yeah. mm-hmm. but I, I i like also the improvisation the from walk around like oh yeah, yeah of course but, like but that, yeah. it took me some time to realize that because mm-hmm. in general I like to say stuff with my magic as well yes but you really have to just for walk around it's really better to to try Improve, to keep that to a yeah. minimum maybe say one sentence if you want to say yeah. something yeah. but improvise and well also sets are sometimes nice to have if you don't have your day it's like nice to just know this this this, this. Yes, yeah. but it's also nice to just do something and then be spontaneous like okay i'm going to do ambitious card now or i'm going to do homing card now or yeah. i'm going to do a sandwich effect or this is yeah, this feeling just sort of feel feeling. the audience yeah, and yeah. whatever comes up in you to do you just do that yeah yeah i like also things like oh you see somebody with a cup uh, mm-hmm. walking and then like i i like doing that like uh, yeah come around hey, take a card shuffle the cards and then put the card in the drink and so on mm-hmm. and ask somebody hey make a picture and the people and you know you're making mm-hmm. like a you're seeing a different stuff which you can <laughs> do in that mm-hmm. moment and uh, and then you can do oh, that that's super funny yeah. a friend of mine he used to mm-hmm. at a gig he used to when he was done performing for yeah. one group he used to ask hey guys can I ask you for a favor yeah, yeah like in like half an hour if you hear a group scream can you all just for fun also start to scream oh, and he would have had like a lot of people in the room already like a lot of tables uh-huh. And at one point he would just do something and like the person hired him would come in and this group started screaming and the whole room, everyone starts to like yell and scream, I'm like what the fuck? Mm-hmm. And they're all having fun, but the host thing's like, oh my God, this magician is amazing. He's like making everyone scream. How is he doing this? Yeah, that's a real problem. I, I, I did some uh, street uh, uh, magic and, mm-hmm. then, and then, well, it, it was really important like to do uh, color and sound like mm. people need to see and hear you otherwise they are not waiting they go further so to make a big crowd and so and uh, yeah that is really important like to be loud and so mm. like uh, i know some magicians they bring even like uh, you know like uh, in, in you know the magic trick where like card under the uh, card box mm. something like that Instead of that, uh, I know like a magician, uh, uh, a 
friend of mine. Um, he used a, a bell. Okay. And he's just doing it with the bell. So the the guy who has hired him, mm. or oh, he's working, or oh, there is something happening, you know. Mm. And that's also a thing because uh, some of the magic is silent, mm. and then it's like uh, the person who hired you did mm. that happen something, you know. So yeah. Exactly. So that's also sometimes a problem, like being yeah. artistic versus yeah. um, commercial. commercial. Yeah. But. I think that's also why I think it's important to understand the situation you're in and to do magic for that situation. Mm. Like we're working on a show and then, I mean, that's our show. We can do whatever the fuck we want. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but if I get hired by someone, then, then I also I have obligations to that person yeah. Yeah. because they're not coming to see me no. or, or you or us, no, no, no. But, but they're hiring you to come to them and to give them something. Yes. So it's a bit of a difference, I feel. Yeah, actually, what what the magician which you talked about who said mm-hmm. people to shout. That's actually why why they are ha- hiring you to shout and, uh, mm, and exactly and, yeah. and, and in a certain moment everybody is shouting. You are connecting with people, mm-hmm. and it's that's the main thing of the magician. It's like people mm-hmm. are shouting and they're connecting also. Definitely and they're easier to talk and so on. It's mm-hmm. yeah. And the party goes on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. So, um, what have you learned from invisible practice? Invisible practice. Or what do you think about it? Or? Oh, I, I like it. Yeah? I really like it. Yeah. I I, I really like how you start. Mm. So I'm I'm following an invisible practice basically from like the beginning. I think mm. right. And in the beginning, I didn't know it was you. Oh, really? In the, in the first, like, first post or, the, like, mm-hmm. two, three posts. Because, oh, I see somebody follows me. But he, at that moment, you didn't put your name. Mm-hmm. And Alvaro also. Mm-hmm. So it was just invisible practice. Mm-hmm. And just, it was really invisible. Mm-hmm. And I saw, like, uh, you know, uh, and it's like, uh, you feel that, um, that, oh, you know, you're, it's something invisible the guy the guys they're not writing but then I knew oh it's you it's probably you. yeah it's you mm-hmm. so I like the idea mm-hmm. the name invisible practice is beautiful and uh, I like the stuff which are you guys are doing you and Alava and Alvaro yeah thank you man yeah I think uh, I, I, f- I found a lot of inspiration it's also like uh, you're doing also a lot of tips mm-hmm. like work on that work on that and then sometimes I'm thinking yeah but I know that and a lot of people in the comments also like mm. yeah we know that but in a sense it's um, a lot of things are simple the truth is simple but yeah, you but need to remind it exactly it's, it's a reminder. reminder and we, we practice till the end of our life okay we well, have this 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 thing this mm. thing this thing and then, oh yeah I will work a bit on that. Oh yeah, I practice mm. a bit my pattern. Oh, I practice with the, those moves. Oh, a bit mm. silence and so on. And uh, I like that. Yeah. It's also like key card principle, for example. Like it's mm. something a lot of people, a lot of people who are even not magicians know about it. Yes. And a lot of magicians know it in the beginning and they throw it away, and then later you realize like, fuck, this is really powerful actually. Like you can do so many good things with this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, even if you do it correctly people who know about it are not going to notice it like until you know like a lot a lot about it but, but that's that's like actually with most of the mm-hmm. magic like the most simple like magic uh, methods mm-hmm. if you do it good if you put all your energy it can go so strong because mm-hmm. it's not about the method simplicity it's what yeah. the audience perceives the audience yeah like but, but in some way that's also in one way it's about the method as well i would say because uh, sometimes because a move is too difficult we substitute it with like three or four different moves and then mm-hmm. what you see becomes much less powerful but yeah i mean if you if you put your practice in it the method even if it's a simple method mm-hmm. it will become, of course yeah it will become better and you know how to it use doesn't that. matter whether it's simple or difficult like just if it's the most uh, like simple magic like the first magic which i mm. saw i was like five years i saw the magic mm. I, but i didn't saw the illusion mm. it was just this like the mm. taking the, the finger yeah. apart and uh, i but i learned it and then i thought but you know what i will like do it good the angles everything mm. and now like sometimes i'm doing it 
to children, but I do it yeah, in a like, yeah, like, yeah um, well, but I doing it in a serious way and like I'm imagining that I'm taking my finger off and then I'm and I see and the child and I'm just like wow I'm, and I see the parents some of them like <laughs> of course if you know it you know it mm-hmm. that, that's that's the other thing but if you don't know it then so sometimes not, yeah mm-hmm. so yeah I think it's uh, about how much energy you put in it right so, yeah, yeah okay like yeah a lot of inspiration also like last podcast or the podcast before you talked about the book of uh tamaris tamaris yeah, yeah i watched it and i thought oh but that also it also relates to what you said before like mm-hmm. like you have to enjoy it it's just like yeah. the love for the magic but that's that's mm-hmm. contagious like other yeah. people also feel that you love it make you enjoy yeah. it you need to be in your uh, exactly. world like of magic mm-hmm. yeah Yes, of which Tamaris is also talking about it. So yeah, mm-hmm. after the podcast, I took uh, the the book again and I went into it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's uh, nice. visual practice <laughs> is good. Yeah. You want <laughs> to get magic? You want to get something to eat? To what? To eat? Yes, I want something okay. to eat. It's nice. Then. So thank you for uh, being here. Thank you for inviting. Pleasure. Me. <laughs> thank you. Guys. And sing us out, dude. Eat, whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm.